How wonderful person, this is Anton, and well, let's start this video with an actual video of what we're discussing. This was recently released by the European Southern Observatory, and it's a simulation that shows us what was recently observed from a nearby star explosion in a galaxy not so far away from us. And so, yeah, we're looking at an actual supernova that happened sometimes last year in a nearby galaxy NGC 3621 that's about 22 million light years away from us. And there's something really important that scientists were able to discover in this particular observation that once again sort of contradicts some of the modern predictions and some of the modern models, because for many decades theoretical models of supernova treated these explosions simply as stars collapsing, rebounding, exploding, and usually creating a nearly perfect sphere. Mostly because, as you probably know, stars are usually spheres. But these recent observations revealed something different and were able to tell us a little bit more about the actual shape of a recently exploded star, essentially revealing that supernova are almost never perfectly spherical. They seem to be asymmetric, layered, and sometimes possibly even explode twice. And so let's discuss some of these discoveries from several studies in the description below and talk about why this matters. But in general, for astronomy, supernovas are of course really important because they usually tell us two things. They tell us about how various heavier elements are forged inside different stars, including elements inside you and me which are essential for life, but at the same time they also help us measure the universe and its expansion and tell us a little bit more about various properties across the cosmos. But as I mentioned, for many decades most of our knowledge of supernova was essentially just theoretical, based on mathematical predictions and based on various computer simulations, pretty much all of the supernova were believed to be more or less spherical and would possibly change the shape as they expanded and interacted with a lot of matter around them. Matter that was released from the star hundreds and thousands of years prior that would eventually form a very beautiful but somewhat asymmetrical shape. And so the majority of different simulations and the majority of predictions basically painted the same picture. When a massive star, approximately 8 solar masses, runs out of fuel, its core violently collapses and then creates a shockwave traveling outwards through the star's dense layers, leaving behind some kind of a neutron star or a black hole as a leftover. But it was trying to understand the shockwave that was always the biggest challenge in astrophysics. Because ultimately the shape of that explosion holds the fundamental information about the essential engine that powers the blast. So for example one question here is, is the explosion driven equally in all direction by neutrinos or is it perhaps misshapen and channeled by the rotation of powerful magnetic fields, like for example some kind of a directional jet. And historically observing the shape, especially in the first critical hours, was nearly impossible and that's because supernova are often way too distant and too small to resolve. As a matter of fact usually the best image we get is something like this. And it's the supernova remnants that usually resemble something like this that we then observe years and years later. And well, just a few days ago, scientists released their first major discovery in regards to what's known as a type 2 supernova, a collapse and an explosion of a massive star. As always, you can find the study in the description below. But it was this event, SN 2024 UGI, 22 million light years away from us, that finally allowed scientists to see the shape. And that's because in this case researchers acted exceptionally fast to observe this. Approximately 26 hours after the initial detection, they used the European Southern Observatory to employ a special technique referred to as spectral polarimetry. So here you can think of it as basically using polarized sunglasses to detect hidden information that would be invisible otherwise. And while in a perfectly spherical explosion, the polarization of light usually cancels out. Yet if the explosion is non-spherical, we expect polarized light to form certain geometrical shapes which can then be used to reveal the true geometry of the object. And this is kind of what we see in this image with the polarization evolving over time. And here the surprise was pretty much immediate. The initial blast of material breaking through the star surface was not spherical. It seemed to be symmetric along the axes and according to the researchers was possibly shaped like an olive and not a sphere. And so here once again it's worth watching the simulation they created to kind of understand what's happening. And this asymmetry was measured right at the moment of the shock breakout when the explosion first punches through the star's surface just a few hours after the collapse. And so here the findings reveal that the physical mechanism driving the explosion was not equal in every direction but was actually already shaped in a certain way. And this unique shape suggests that the core collapse itself might be governed by mechanisms that are also directional 
and possibly do involve some kind of a magnetorotational process. Or basically, the magnetic fields inside the star very likely reshape the explosion as it happens in real time. And on top of this, the team also discovered that the directional olive shape was a little bit misaligned with the symmetric axis of most of the surrounding material. Which is actually what you're seeing here once again, with all of this circumstellar material being shifted in a slightly different position compared to the central explosion. And this misalignment hints at very complex scenarios, possibly involving either a binary companion or a very powerful existing magnetic field inside, which influenced the star's mass loss prior to the explosion. And so here the analysis of this event was quite spectacular. Basically the first time ever we got to actually measure the shape of a brand new supernova. But this was not the only discovery that surprised the scientists about these events, with additional discoveries coming from type 1 supernova, which usually involve white dwarfs exploding as well. And type 1a supernova are very important, because these are the ones we usually use to measure distances. But here the question was, so exactly how do white dwarfs explode? And do they actually explode in the same way all the time? With many astronomers suspecting that some of these type 1a supernova possibly happening even before the critical mass limit, triggered by a mechanism referred to as a double detonation. In other words, some white dwarfs might explode for some other reasons, which will obviously complicate a lot of cosmological calculations if confirmed. And so in this type of a model, a white dwarf pulls material, often helium, from the companion star, forming a very thick layer on the surface, with this helium layer igniting first, and then creating a shock wave that travels inward, triggering a secondary, much larger explosion that destroys the whole star. In other words, a white dwarf would not have to reach its critical mass, in this case referred to as the Chandrasekhar limit, and may detonate prematurely. And once again, for the first time ever, astronomers seem to have found visual physical proof of this very energetic and very bizarre event. But in this case, this was not a real-time event, and the evidence was actually found in something that happened centuries ago. SNR 0509-67.5 that you see right here. And so by once again using VLT from the European Southern Observatory, and by performing a very detailed analysis, researchers observed that the shocked ejecta far from this event seemed to produce very bizarre layers. And the surprise here was that elements like calcium was separated into two distinct spatially separated shells, basically producing a double shell structure, which was previously predicted for these double detonations. And so this outer calcium shell very likely came from the initial helium blast, and the inner shell came from the core blast, with all this basically resembling this. And this is a really important observation because it provides direct visual evidence that quite a few white dwarfs may actually explode for slightly different reasons, and may even explode before they should be exploding. And this definitely complicates cosmological studies where white dwarfs, and specifically their explosions, are used for measuring distances. But at the moment, that's all we know, so there's not much else to say. And our last discovery is from a completely different supernova, and actually one that's pretty far away from us, that was originally discovered back in 2021. This is the event SN 2021 YFJ. And in this case here, this is not so much about the shape of the explosion, and more about the incredible destruction of the star's internal structure prior to the blast. Because we generally believe that a lot of these massive stars before the explosion are basically shaped like onions. Here's actually a kind of a good representation showing us what we think they look like. Concentric shells of elements, with the lightest elements like hydrogen on the outside, and heaviest ones, iron, in the center. And while just outside the inert iron core, a lot of theoretical models predict a layer that's enriched in heavy elements like silicon and sulfur. But this layer should always remain hidden. Basically this is a model, and we've never seen actual evidence. But when astronomers observed SN2021 YFJ, here the surprise came from the early light spectrum that seemed to show very bright, very narrow emission lines, highly ionized in silicon, sulfur and argon, which have never been seen in any supernova previously. And these are the elements from the oxygen burning phase, which usually takes place just a few years before the explosion. Which is really why we never see them, because they're deep inside. But the fact that they were observed in this particular study, and in this case, confirms one important idea. It confirms that, as predicted, stars seem to be layered right before they explode. But here there's this obvious question. Why do we see these elements in this explosion, but not others? And that's because it turns out that this was a very unique explosion. In this case, this star was potentially violently stripped of all of its outer layers, 
including hydrogen, helium, carbon, and oxygen, right down to its internal core. So essentially the star was just a remnant containing silicon and sulfur shell, with the outer shell being completely removed. This was the first example of a new type of supernova, now referred to as Type 1EN, a stripped core supernova. But in order to produce something like this, the mass loss required to expose the core has to be absolutely extreme. Basically, the only way to explain this right now is if the star itself somehow released all of its outer layers before the explosion, but the current standard models are not able to explain any of this, with this whole observation basically challenging modern textbooks on how massive stars are supposed to explode at the end. But the only explanation that scientists provide right now basically being a series of very massive repetitive expulsions, or very powerful eruptions from the star, right before it finally exploded. It's not entirely clear why this happened, but basically that's the only way to explain this. So essentially in this particular case, all of these upper layers were removed, with only the bottom layers being left behind. Now if that's the case, then well, we should be seeing more of these explosions sometimes in the future, that may help us understand exactly what happened here. But at the moment, this is definitely a very bizarre mystery. With essentially all of these studies I've discussed today, once again confirming that even supernova are way more complex than we ever thought, and can actually produce a lot of variation and a lot of complexity that nobody expected. And I mean, just the fact that we were able to observe an actual shape of a supernova as it was happening in real time is already very impressive. Now once again, this is just a simulation based on the data from the telescope, but right now this explains exactly what the scientists observed. And that means that we'll discuss these events in some of the future videos because there are still so many unanswered questions. And you can actually check out some of the previous videos on previous mysteries of supernova in one of the links in the description. Anyway, on that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining a channel membership that grants you early access. You can also support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.